So whenever I help one of my corporate clients develop a new product, I follow the same five-step process almost every time. I've worked with a lot of different uh, corporates who are, let's say, traditionally non-SaaS companies. Maybe they are mostly uh, like consultancy companies, maybe they're hardware companies, maybe they have, they have some other, let's say, legacy business line that is non-SaaS, but they are then trying to push SaaS products out into the market. Sometimes these just make a ton of sense and they just push play and get them out. Other times, because they are, let's say, inexperienced in building SaaS products or building technology products uh, as such, they tend to build things that then end up not working, right? So maybe they build something that should solve a massive problem. Maybe it does, but they just can't sell it. So it is a essentially a failed corporate venture. I have a really large client in Belgium uh, that I have built a global product division for. I've done it for some major um, consultancy firms in the US and I've done it for some major hardware providers both in Europe and the US. And over the course of these projects and engagements, I've come up with, let's say, a simple five-step process that I use and I guide my clients to in order to determine if we should build something. And uh, so the first step is that you get an idea. And the only reason that that is the first step is that it can not be the first step. Like whatever happens, always someone has an idea to say, hey, wouldn't it be awesome if we like built the thing that connects these two other things? Or if we took this thing we have and then applied it to this market over here or whatever. So the only reason I'm identifying is at it as the first step is to like put a frame around it and saying, this is great. This is something we should do, but it is not the decision to do the thing, right? So that's why we're calling it the first step. The second step is to go and talk to customers. And we're gonna to talk to customers twice in this process. So this isn't the, we're gonna to talk to them about everything. Essentially, hey, we're gonna talk, go talk to them, tell them our great idea, get them as excited as we are, and then build the thing because this is the usual process that a lot of these corporates follow is like, hey, we have an idea. I spoke to a customer, they really like it. We're then gonna go build it. Okay, no, but do talk to customers and tell them about the idea and the problem that you're trying to solve and then try to engage them in figuring out if they have actual demand for this. Like, okay, so exactly what problem are we solving for you, dear customer? And do you have budget for this? How is your buying cycle? If we build this, how would you make the decision to purchase this? Like ask all the salesy types of questions that you are going to have to ask later anyways, but focus mostly on the, on the issue that you're resolving. So it might be something like, hey, we are pushing, I had a client, they were in the construction industry and the construction companies were like, hey, I'm buying you know, for, we, we talked to one country manager with a customer, he was buying for 5 million euros worth of hardware every year. And the reason he did that was that he lost track of where the hardware was. So it's like, I buy the hardware, it goes on site, and then next year I have to buy another 5 million worth of hardware because I don't know where it is. So we essentially said, hey, let's do some IoT and we can put a tracking device on and we'll know where the hardware is. And, you know, maybe you'll only lose like 4 million worth of hardware, right? Great. So that was sort of the initial idea for the product. And then we talked to them and we quantified the value a little bit. So the, the value here is, well, 5 million worth of hardware a year for this one client. How many clients do we have? Can we, can we have essentially the same conversation with this other client that is very similar and go into that? Okay. Because then once you've had all these conversations, you then sit down and you formulate as clearly as you can what the problem is, what the business case is for the customer and what the ICP, the ideal customer profile is. And then in the third step, you run the numbers. So third step is total addressable market, total obtainable market, total serviceable market. We have a cost to develop this thing. We're gonna have a general sort of outline of a, of a marketing and go-to-market motion. So we're gonna say, hey, you know, these types of customers we can identify. I usually say that we should be able to identify at least a 
hundred million dollars worth of potential business for us in just like getting a list. So if you sell to real estate developers and your average price point is going to be whatever, a million dollars, then you should be able to find a hundred real estate developers. And so that you're able to contact later that you can then sell to. So you say, Hey, we have an initial list of a go to market strategy where we can find these customers and sell to. And we think that it's going to cost us X dollars to work each of them as a lead. And we then think that we can close a few of them and that's our business plan and so forth. So you build the entire budget because a lot of times this will fail. So I had another client, they were building, they already had a lot to do with, uh, with systems for hospitals and they were, they were running a core infrastructure of 28 hospitals in Europe. And they say, Hey, we can build like this great piece of software that is going to solve this like awesome, annoying problem for these hospitals. And you know, maybe we should do that. And then we sat down and said, okay, so how much are the hospitals going to pay for this? And it was like, Oh, a hundred thousand euros a piece. Okay, great. Like that's, that's not a bad ACV. Well, who can we sell it to? Well, we can sell it to the 28 hospitals. Okay. Anyone else? Not really, because it's dependent on the core system that we already installed and so forth. Okay. So the total addressable market is 28 hospitals. And if we close all of them at hundred K, that's going to be 2.8 million. Like, is that worth it? Like how much is it going to cost to develop? Well, it's probably going to cost around two to 3 million to develop, which means that, you know, actually it's probably going to cost twice that. So, and then the business case is less than 3 million a year and you have to deliver it and to have the operating costs, like maybe not the thing to bet on, right? So it goes out. So the third step is where you run all these numbers. You get really clear on who your ICP is. You know that they're contactable and you know that you actually have a final market and then the unit economics are good. Okay. And for whatever case you're in, your mileage may vary, but clear these things out first and make sure that, you know, someone commercial is involved in the process at this step. Step four is you now go back to the customers and talk to them again. And by this point, you have created what I call a product and a PowerPoint. So you'll say, Hey, remember we had that conversation like six weeks ago or a month ago, where we talked about this awesome problem that you had. And we've actually come up with, with like an outline of something that we might build, but we want to test if this is really like a no brainer proposition for you, because if it isn't, you know, then we either need to change it or not build it at all. So not a sales call, but a validation call. So you, you go see them or you get them on a zoom call. Usually something like 45 minutes is enough. And then you have created a PowerPoint, which first shows them the problem. Like this is the problem that we're going to solve. Like, are you buying into this? We are going to, you know, connect the hardware thing with this thing. So you can find the hardware again. Is that like a real thing for you? And if they, even if you have like a slight, almost, I want to say disturbance in the force or like friction at this point, you want to pause and go back like, Hey, I thought that we were going to find hardware. Wasn't that the thing? Or I thought that we were, we were going to do this thing with the patient journals in the hospitals. I thought that was the thing you were tired of printing them and punching in the data in the other system, whatever it is, because if you miss this part, you know, that's going to be a problem later on. So like make sure that the core job to be done, that you're totally aligned, then show them the packaging, meaning that, Hey, we're thinking to have a basic version and an advanced version. And then we're going to have this add on as well. Right? So we're going to have whatever, um, the find the hardware, and then we're going to have the find the hardware and do the predictive maintenance as well, whatever it is. Right. And maybe, Hey, we're also going to have a procurement module if you want to buy new hardware. So that's an, that's an add on, like whatever it is that you can actually sell them. And this actually goes for services as well. So you might want to say, Hey, and we're going to do the installation on all the hardware. That's a service, or we're going to do the data migration, or we're going to do the training of your people or whatever it is that is actually for sale and that the customer can put in basket and check out with. You want to state very clearly and say, one, am I making myself clear? Like, am I communicating what is for sale? And do you understand it? Like fair game if they're not, but then you need to work on that. But secondly, two, you want it. Like, do you actually have demand for these things that I'm offering now that I'm being very concrete? 
And the customer can, of course, say, sure, it depends on price, but, but on the face of it, if you can deliver what you're telling me here, like you can deliver the basic package and the predictive maintenance, I would be interested in that. Maybe not so much the procurement thing. And, you know, we definitely want the installation and the onboarding and so forth. Okay, great. Now you have an alignment with a proposition that the customer actually wants. Then you can talk about the pricing model. So you can say, we are going to price the installation on a, like a time and material basis. We're going to scope it with a flat fee. And then the license as it's ongoing is going to be, a, you know, whatever price per hardware and so forth. But you're not going to tell them the actual prices. You're not going to say $10 per hardware. You're going to say a price per hardware per month because the customer can not like the model, like the price per hardware, which you need to know before you tell them the price. Because if you just say $10 per piece of hardware and they don't like to be priced per hardware, they're gonna say, oh, that's too expensive. And now you're discussing whether it's 10 or five, rather than discussing if it should be per piece of hardware or something else. So tell them the model first, and then you can tell them the price point. And if at the last stage, at the price point stage, they are at least willing to talk further, then you can go to the fifth step in the process, which is to build it.